Hey, what's up guys? It's Magrathea. It's been a very long time since I've made a video and that's because of a lot of different reasons. But I have some footage from a vlog that I had intended to put out very shortly after the event happened and I'm gonna just put it out now. Um, better late than never. This event happened during the spring semester at UMass Dartmouth and I hope you enjoy the video. Hello, 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 and I am at UMass again. Right now we're headed to the library, and all you translation fiends know something good is about to happen. We've got Richard Zenith on campus. My friend Grace is going to be, um, chair, what's the right word? Hosting? I don't know. Um, a conversation with him. They're going to be talking about um, the new biography that he just put out about um, Fernando Pessoa and hopefully some translation chit chat. Okay, so I'm like half an hour early, which is, you know, just me being anxious, but I am looking forward to the event starting because. Well, I'm just going to ship. Mini quiche. There's mini quiches in there, and I want like 17,000. We've also got some fruit and cheese, and some crackers, and some more fruit, and some lemon bars, and cookies, and um, I don't know if they're strawberry inside, or if they're coconut inside, or whatever they are inside, but we'll find out later. Here's our space, getting all set up. And up there in the yellow shirt and beautiful blazer is Grace, and she's running the show. Are you ready? Yeah, I feel ready. We're That's good. Ready. We're gonna chat. It's gonna be fun. The biography is very good. Um, and yeah, so I'm feeling ready to go. So <laughs> Y'all, this is my friend Grace. She's fabulous. Um, if you're interested in uh, Brazilian literature, but you don't read uh, Portuguese, keep an eye out for things that Grace translates because she's really good at it. And she's um, just like me, starting out a hopefully blossoming, budding career. Um, and we're gonna have fun tonight. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here in person and for those tuning in online. Um, I have the pleasure tonight of um, conversing with Richard Zenith, um, the author of the critically acclaimed Pessoa, a biography. Um, he's also an award-winning Portuguese-English translator. His translations of Fernando Pessoa include the Book of Disquiet, and Fernando Pessoa and Company selected poems, which won a Penn Award for Poetry and Translation. He's also translated poetry by Luiz de Camões, Sofia de Melo Carlos Dumont de Andrade, and many living poets. He spent more than a decade researching and writing Pessoa, a biography, which we'll be discussing tonight. Um, and that was also one of the New York Times critics' top books in 2021. Um, and we're especially grateful to have Richard tonight at the University of Massachusetts Dartmouth in light of the university's longstanding relationship with Fernando Pessoa, which includes two volumes that the center put out for Portuguese and literary studies about Pessoa, including this volume about Alberto Caedo, which came out in 1999, and it was the first um, journal to dedicate a whole volume to one of Pessoa's heteronyms. We'll be talking a lot more about the heteronym shortly. Um, Richard has also collaborated with a lot of projects with Tegas Press at the center, including um, this translation of um, sonnets and other poems by Luis de Camões. Um, so I, I also want to give a special shout out to Professor Victor Mendes for taking the initiative to make this collaboration happen. Um, I'm really grateful for it and I'm grateful to everyone at the center for sponsoring the event. Um, with that, I think that's enough for me and I'd like to call Richard up to speak a little bit before we get into our conversation. Thank you. Hospitality and uh, all the good work that everyone's doing. 
so um, I guess that's all I have to say. And now I'll um, hear what Grace has to ask me and what all of you have to ask me. So I look forward to our conversation. Yeah. <laughs> First of all, since I haven't said it yet, I really enjoyed this biography. Um, it, um, his life is so interesting. His internal world is so interesting, and you did such a good job of documenting that. His sort of intellectual journeys through um, everything he did, and it was really interesting feeling like I was inside of his head, as chaotic as his head can be. Um, so the first thing I wanted to ask is, in writing this, what parts of Kisoa's life and biography did you find the most urgent to present to the public? And or what aspects of his life were kind of under or misrepresented before? Um, George the Sin was a great scholar, a poet and a scholar, and, uh, uh, and also wrote many important essays on Fernando Pessoa. And he was kind of an Einstein in the sense that he had these wonderful intuitions about Pessoa, even when not that much had been published. Uh, and so, so he, he, he's really important. Anyway, once he uh, gave a talk that was uh, titled Pessoa, Warming Kinuka Foy, and then that was, that was published in Portuguese. Actually, it was published initially in English. The man, uh, Pessoa, so the man who never was. And actually that uh, title, it was a provocative statement. And I don't think George the Sin actually believed that the school never was. In fact, he presented some uh, important biographical information, which, which I cite in the biography that I, I've written. But at any rate, that notion, the so a uh, man who never was, kind of uh, took hold. There's this idea that the soul was just all his work. There's no, no one, no man behind the work. And so I think uh, setting out to write this biography, one of the things, the thing, most important thing I wanted to say that yes, Fernando Basoa was. Yes, he existed. Yes, he was a, a person and, and, and with a complex person with uh, all these feelings and not just thoughts. Um, so so there so that then there's a story there too, just like anybody has that has their story. So I wanted to talk about this story uh, of which is all uh, has to do finally with, with the writer because and it, sometimes it's possible maybe to separate an artist work from the artist's life. Uh, for instance someone like Mozart, uh, he has a very curious biography <laughs> if you read about it, and some of the letters that he would write to, uh, to, to the woman he was in love with. And it, it's, it's hard, I think, to uh, connect maybe the life with, with the work, you just listen to the work. But in the so it's, it's all very, very much tied together, so I think by exploring the life, we uh, come to appreciate And so, uh, as far as things that I wanted to emphasize that, uh, about the so was like one thing was uh, his childhood, all, all of his growing up. And I think in any kind of life, you don't have to be a Freudian to, uh, to understand that your childhood is, is fundamental. You can understand really what, what's going on uh, from the form, you know, during the formative years that that is going to tell you an awful lot, and that's really where everything uh, happens. So, so I was keen on, on focusing on that, doing a lot of research, going to Durban also, uh, to, to, to find out about what, what, what went on there. And there, there were things that uh, emerged, for instance, well this was thanks also to Basoa's niece, who is still living, Manuela Nogueira, she's 96 years old, fantastic health. She was 10 years old when uh, her uncle Fernando Pessoa died. But uh, she had, still has in her possession some letters that uh, were from uh, Pessoa's great uncle, who was uncle. Uh, she wrote a biography, uh, How to Live, 
one question of a life of Montaigne, uh, uh, how to live one question, 20 answers. That was the title of all this. So she doesn't tell a biography of Montaigne, this is the 16th century French essayist uh, and philosophy. She doesn't tell the story straight through. She goes through his, picks out different questions and he address in his essays. And she'll talk about that in such and such an essay. And then behind that essay, all these things that of his of Montaigne's life behind her. And so it's a very ingenious way of talking about the biography, about somebody's life. Uh, and then there's a Michael Gora who wrote a, a book called Portrait of a Novel, which is about Henry James's writing of Portrait of the Lady, which some people consider it his greatest novel. So it's not a biography as such, it's kind of a, an anatomy, uh, a biography of this novel. But in doing that, he tells a lot about James's life. So uh, in, in approaching Pessoa, I considered also uh, some sort of novel approach, which could be telling from different voices. Which one was Henry Dennis or Alberto Gaia or now Pessoa himself. But, but finally, I, I decided that Pessoa was is already so complicated with all these interests in so many different things and all these different personalities that, that he invented. And I didn't feel that there was really um, uh, a complete, thorough biography, a traditional one, to be able to then begin applying these innovative approaches. And, I, and I'm glad, finally, that I chose really to write the biography chronologically, because in doing so, I discovered uh, a lot about this. So I saw these connections coming through as he's growing up, things that are going on in his life, things that are going on in his writing. So I learned a lot by, by, by writing in this one. <coughs> You actually answered a couple other questions I was going to ask, which is kind of what your methodology was and what inspired you to write a biography. Um, but I also, so I think that even if you didn't take an approach like the ones you cited, which were these kind of out there approaches, I still found the style you took to be really innovative in the way that you wove the biographical details of his life in with historical events and also in with his literary interests of the time. I really liked reading about what Pessoa was reading about when he was at a certain age. I felt like that was a very creative way to just get in his head, you know? And I think, um, especially because I think you mentioned in the introduction that a lot of his most personal letters are lost, right? Yes. Um, so I thought that that was, I, I think you say it's a, a tour of his imaginative life and I really appreciated that approach to it. It was really interesting. Um, so, that kind of has to do with my next question, which is that because the biography paints such an intimate picture of Fernando Pessoa's life, um, stitching together images based on private writing, correspondence, interviews, the trunk with like 25, how many things were in it? The <laughs> <laughs> Actually, close to, uh, close to 30,000. Um, and about uh, at least 25,000 sheets with Pessoa's writing. So going through all of that and getting such an in-depth, uh, I guess, kind of relationship with him, like, do you feel like you got to know him personally through this process? And did you like the person that you got to know? Well, first I'll back up, because you mentioned, uh, and I should have mentioned that actually before, uh, all the uh, historical background of, of what's going on during during so it's life. That was also, I thought, uh, fundamental to put into the, into the book. For, for various reasons, because I think for any person, uh, it, it is inevitably shaped by where they they are and, uh, and and what's going on around them. And uh, and, and then in Pessoa was very interested always in uh, the world around him. And so uh, and also uh, maybe for a. Portuguese people, they know something about Portuguese history, although 
probably not as much as they should for, for you know, history going back to the, to the 19th century. And, and certainly for uh, other audiences outside of Portugal, you know, they, they don't know any notes really about, about Portugal and, and this world that Basso grew up in. Who knows about South Africa? And when Basso was there for almost 10 years of his childhood, and Basso lived in other fascinating times, which is a, another good reason to talk about because they're interesting in and of themselves. So you have one so is there in uh, Durban. That's where uh, Gandhi began his uh, campaign on, on behalf of uh, Indian rights. Because there was a huge population of Indians in, in South Africa. And, uh, and Gandhi was there when Maso was there. And uh, then you have the Boer War that happens in South Africa, when Poet Basso is there. And when he comes back to Portugal in 1905, and 17 years old, Portugal is this monarch or monarchy that's supposed to be now, uh, but uh, a kind of sick, ailing monarch, monarchy. It's a republic in 1910, but it's a dysfunctional republic. Then morphs finally to a military uh, dictatorship that comes into power in 1926, and then finally kind of sells her. So, so all of that historical uh, background I thought was very interesting. And then what you said, Grace, about weaving in um, all these different strands, that's not exactly how you put it, but, but uh, that was uh, really what I tried to do, rather than, because what happens with Pessoa too, uh, I mean, like the first biography written in 1950 was when it was published, Jean-Pierre He talks about Pessoa's uh, interest in esoterica, talks about Pessoa's uh, sexuality, some talks about interest in politics, but he has kind of chapters dedicated to each thing. But what happens in Pessoa is that all of his interests sprout when he's very young, and then they all continue throughout his life. So that so, so that okay, one thing comes to the stage and proceeds into the background, then yet another thing, and then that goes into the background, and and it's to really understand to to, to feel Pessoa's life. What I uh, tried to do was to uh, weave together all those strands and the braid and, and 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 take it through all all, the, all those years, um, and. Uh, so you're uh, getting back now to your latest question is about uh, how we, we repeat that. Sure. Um, like, do you feel like you got to know him personally? Uh, and did you like the person you got to know? <laughs> uh, well, I, I guess the short answer, if, if I got to know him, is no. <laughs> in, in, in that, I guess it depends what you mean by knowing, but I think that so what? Uh, didn't even know himself. Maybe nobody, none of us know ourselves finally. I, I think that Basoa wasn't so con concerned really to know himself. I think knowing oneself implies also um, settling on something. You know, this is who I am. And Basoa wasn't interested in doing that. He, all, he was always on the move, inward. And, was thinking of new things, always wanting to be someone else. And he complained in a way, uh, sometimes in his writing, about this uh, in inability to settle down and, and to actually know himself. Is that even, as soon as you would feel something, instead of uh, kind of incorporating that in, into it, kind of constructing an inner identity, no, he put it onto paper, he converted it to writing. So it was that was his concern. She was always converting everything, his experience, into writing. So there isn't this, you know, uh, definite pessoa to, to, to know. Um, so that's the short answer. <laughs> but, uh, but of course, I, I did uh, come to know many, many things about pessoa that I didn't. Uh, and, certain 
well, certain moments of his life, for instance, uh, after his mother dies in 1925, uh, then he writing the biography chronologically, and I was looking at all, all the things that he's writing year by year, and what's going on. I realized, I'd never really noticed this before, that uh, after his mother dies, but so there's a year when he has writer's block, he writes, writes very little poetry during that year. And then uh, a little over a year later, then kind of the, the damn rights, and suddenly he's writing again. Um, and, uh, and, and when he starts writing again, it has to do with remembering also uh, about his, his mother. And, uh, so, and then there are other you know, different uh, moments in Pessoa's life, things that, that I didn't come to know. Uh, and then uh, as far as Pessoa and whether, whether I like Pessoa. Um, I, uh, I don't know if Pessoa is somebody that I would want to hang out with. <laughs> uh, and to, to, to be perfectly honest, uh, but he's somebody I admire tremendously. Uh, he's somebody, and this is something also that I came to know in writing the biography, I learned a lot about the sort of writing, uh, that he was somebody who, who made no concessions. He was always uh, true to himself, even though that's sort of his self, you know, the self is constantly mutating. But although in there, you, you do have certain principles that are fairly constant. And, uh, but at any rate, the soul was uh, going to do what he wanted to do. And he wasn't outwardly aggressive. He was a shy, uh, soft-spoken, soft uh, could never be physically violent. But I think he was a, a master of what, what we call nowadays soft power. <laughs> so he, uh, would, he would get his way, finally. And uh, in his family, among his relatives, and friends, he would always uh, do things his way. And, uh, and I admire also in Pessoa, um, I guess, uh, uh, just a, a brutal honesty, uh, which comes through in, in, in his writing, his the book of Disquiet, so many of his poems, and elsewhere, uh, where he's just, you know, lays himself out on, on, on paper. Okay, there's all these other selves that so invents, but all, all that feeling that Simposoa's work is real. He, he felt all of that. It's not, that that's not invented. And, uh, and, and that's certainly what I really wanted to, to, to show in, in the biography. But so uh, his reputation, he was a cerebral writer. Yes, he was very cerebral, but he was also very emotional. I would argue even more so. And all of that uh, reasoning was a, a kind of way of him to you know, kind of a bridle on that emotional self to, to keep it uh, under control so that he wouldn't lose it completely. Scholarly and literary views on the heteronyms are heterogeneous. Um, and even within your work, you posit a number of theories on what purpose they serve, depending on the heteronym and what point in, the, in his life it was. There, you know what I mean? So it's not necessarily like, this is what it was, and every single, it's not frigid, because so it wasn't frigid. All of that being said, if you had to boil down your understanding of the heteronym's function and purpose into a sound bite, what would it be? Uh, well, I mentioned that the, the solo is, is interesting addiction to games. So I think finally heteronomy is, is, is uh, a game. You know, I mentioned his uncle Cunha, uh, with whom he first had these invented others. Uh, and, and then it begins, and, and that's Pessoa's writing, uh, even early on when he's a kid, he, he was writing under other names. Uh, and all the sense of fragmentation, Yes, early on, uh, and, uh, and 
also in the Iliad with these uh, invented others, he had these publications, these uh, newspapers he would invent when he was a teenager, 13 years old, write out columns, make neat columns, and, uh, and then have a team of you know, about 50 made up journalists uh, <laughs> writing, writing for these newspapers. But that interest in uh, newspapers also came from his uncle Cunha, who had good friends uh, who worked at a, a newspaper in Lisbon, and he so would go with his uncle Cunha to the, to the office of the newspaper, which was fascinated by the idea of print uh, and things being published. And, uh, and then when he, which is why when he had a fairly substantial inheritance from his grandmother, uh, which he then, when he was so he was 21 years old, he was able to put, put his hands on that inheritance, and he completely wiped it out very quickly by starting up what he hoped would be a, 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 a huge publishing house, and printing a few a few things, nothing nothing literary, and then went out of business. He lost all his money and went, and went into deep debt. Um, so I, I've wondered if maybe the whole heteronomy was in a way a, a happy accident. It, it could be that when he was young, thanks to that uncle, and maybe some other influences, he suddenly had this thing of, in, of making these invented others. There was this game. And then it was connected to writing. Uh, it was connected to publishing. And, and then it just took on, a, it had its own life. And, and then evolved years and then it was, it was just this phenomenally fruitful game that uh, uh, gave us the facility that we know. Hi, um, so I've heard you talk before at the Disquiet program in Lisbon, um, run by Jeff Parker, about translating Pessoa. And I was just wondering how translating Pessoa informed or didn't inform the decisions you made while writing the biography, and if the um, process of writing the biography has made you reconsider your translations at any point in time. Uh, yes, the relationship of, of me as a translator to me as a biographer. And uh, well, translating was you know, certainly a, a way to, to answer. There's no closer read than doing a translation, in my, in my opinion. Uh, so you should really get into the nooks and crannies and, 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 and what's going on there. And, and um, so, so that's already a knowledge that one acquires. Um, so, so I think that was a, an impetus, certainly, for me to then uh, explore the, this person called Fernando Pessoa, which I began, actually, many years before uh, writing his biography. So there was an, an edition I put together many years ago of Pessoa's uh, autobiographical writings. And uh, so, so that uh, kept nagging me. You know, who, who is this Fernando Pessoa? What's going on in the work there? Who's, who's this behind the mask or uh, with the many masks, if anyone? Then um, that's an interesting question you put up. The, the, has did writing a biography make me consider, reconsider? some of my translations, and, and the answer is yes. Uh, I mean, there's certain specific ones where uh, I've recently just actually um, uh, revised the, the Fernando de Silva Company, some of the poems which came out many years ago. Uh, now, uh, is, there's now what just came out a week ago, uh, a new, re deeply revised edition, and also somewhat expanded. There's 20 new poems. But uh, there are a few of the poems in there where, uh, as I was writing the biography, uh, I, then it occurred to me, oh, no, actually, in this poem, something else was going on here. <laughs> so so, so there, there is a relation. Baby, I'm so